Well, happy Saturday, folks. It's the real Captain Kirk here. It's the 27th of January, 2024. We're live from One Bethlehem Plaza here. In fact, uh, today we're kind of on impulse power when you collect uh, weather data from around the world from dozens of different sources. Inevitably, somebody has a hiccup and somebody had a hiccup today. So good news is they always have a plan B and a C. And so we've got uh, all the data here today. But uh, this past week, we spoke with some of our financial services clients, a uh, long time Gordon Haskett research guys. I've been working with uh, Chuck Ground for almost two decades. Uh, but again, what we do is typically look at the weather a year ahead. That's what we do, uh, but then quantify what it means. So this was just one of the slides here. Again, we talked about that exceptionally cold Martin Luther King week that we had here as the polar vortex moved in with the coldest, snowiest in 30 years. But then to quantify what that means for electric blankets up 432% and ice melt up 216, portable heaters up 180%. Uh, cold and snow is good for those seasonal things you and I need to buy, car batteries. Remember all the Chicago Teslas that broke down? Car batteries do well in extremely cold weather. But um, store traffic, you and I aren't out and about, uh, so we tend to be online as opposed to in the brick-and-mortar stores. So again, just some of the research we provide our financial services folks. Um, we'll start here with the last week. We'll summary here ending today here in the U.S. Again, polar vortex has retreated, so now it's five and a half warmer than last year, warmest in seven, fourth warmest in 33 years. 56% um, wetter, number one wettest in 30 years, so typical El Nino pattern for sure. Uh, UK was probably the hot spot, number one warmest, and uh, China the cooler spot, coldest in eight years, fourth coldest in 33 years. Map inset left are the trends versus average. Look at the polar vortex. When it's strong and symmetrical, as you see here, again, it tends to uh, pull all the cold air back to the North Pole. Uh, but what we see here is actually elongating and um, heading toward the Americas. Uh, so again, we do believe uh, the polar vortex is going to come back with a vengeance uh, mid-February, early March. Um, so we've got about a three, four-week period here where we think we're going to have some uh, more intense cold again, like we had here in mid-January, and uh, bigger snowstorm. So we are not done with winter by any means. If we look at the snowfall index, these bars are showing the year-on-year -year change in snowfall across the U.S. Again, obviously, we didn't have much going into this December last year, but December not this year. So the big cold snowy period there in January, uh, latter two weeks of January, that, that big bar there was the cold, the snowiest in over 30 years for the U.S. So that was an intense spike of snow. Uh, we believe that's coming back here in about uh, mid-Feb to uh, probably the first week or two of March. So again, uh, a lull right now for snow, but uh, we do believe that's coming back. Groundhog Day here this week. Uh, we got Friday here, so week ending 3 Feb. Uh, here in the U.S. warm, obviously. It's uh, 12 degrees warmer, warmest in 18 years, second warmest in 33 years. So again, polar vortex lifts out. You're going to get warm. Uh, still on the wet side, 11% wetter than last year, 11th wettest. Um, New England's a snowy spot. Uh, the western high mountains look to be a snowy spot. Um, so again, we'll uh, see a pattern shift here as we get toward the next week. Um, so snowfall this week again, not much. Again, some in New England here, um, Sunday night, Monday. And then uh, the Sierras uh, probably going to be, uh, they need it. They're way below uh, average and way below last year's levels. So again, not much for the west. Uh, and again, if we look at the next week, we see a pattern shift here. So we start to see that cold weather coming into the western half of the country. You see the extreme warms that we've had starting to retreat, uh, still in the upper plains. But again, that's retreating and lifting out as uh, what may be the sign of a polar, polar vortex wobble back into the U.S. So this week, while it's cooler, 2.8 cooler than last year, still seventh warmest. But again, you can see that shifting pattern of colder weather from west, and that'll move across the east um, as we get toward Valentine's Day. Uh, Precip, again, very wet, 71% wet in last year, wettest four, th four years, fourth wettest in 33 years. We'll see about all the snow in the mid-Atlantic, but again, there's definitely going to be a um, snow threat uh, in the east. So again, um, probably overdone here. You're not going to see that much snow, but again, there's definitely a snowy trend here going from west to east uh, across the country here. And we just aggregate these two work world outlook trends here. Again, a little bit misleading here when you're combining a very, very warm week this week and then cooling trend next week again. So um but the theme is that that will be lifting out and uh, polar vortex may be moving back in as we get into that mid-Feb time frame. Precip versus average as the map left. In the world two-week snow fog, just because you're warm doesn't mean you don't have snow because it's still obviously relatively cold. But uh, western um, Russia, Siberia looks uh, snowy. Uh, northeast, far northeast Canada, Alaska, and parts of the west would be the snowy spots. And eventually that's going to be heading east as we get toward the middle part of February. We'll end here with a uh, farmcast. I know our farmers have been beating us up here. Like, when are you going to get out the video out for 2024? We always put out a video on spring, summer, fall, all the way through winter of 2024. Um, so for our farmcast customers, that will be coming out here um, this week. Again, so to look for your inbox uh, to see that video. And again, um, we'll share briefly what farmcast is all about here, and then uh, we'll end there. Have a great week, folks, and we will talk to you this time next week.
When approached by Weather Trends in the spring of 2014, I was a real skeptic. Uh, hearing that a company could come in and predict long-range weather with the accuracy they were claiming seemed crazy. That spring, our, our first touch of realizing that there was something there was they showed planting windows really early on and then really some rain outs for a lot of our seed production facilities. Uh, that year, our seed production facilities were able to get in before everybody else. They got a leg up and they became a believer and then the rest of the company went from there.